on his visit to the United States in 73, we had a, um, we were all trying to get to see him before he left for, for Washington and San Clemente. And finally, they all agreed that he would have a news conference for all the correspondents. So we showed up and I took a tape recorder, fortunately, to do a radio recording and took it and I got to a seat which was just immediately opposite where he was gonna sit down. And I put the, the uh, microphone right under his, almost worked around his mouth. We sat down. We had Soviet cameramen, but in only the bizarre ways that the Russians work. When we got into the Kremlin and then we got into this conference room where Russians were going to be, I see our cameraman operating two totally different sound cameras. He was going to shoot both of them at the same time. We thought, this is just going to be a disaster. And at a point where he was asked about Watergate, by an NBC correspondent, I turned over in the back and I saw my camera being unloaded, changing the film. So I wasn't getting it. I thought, oh my God. And I really was angry. It was almost like a plot, you know. Fortunately, I recorded everything on a, on a tape recorder. And uh, finally the thing was over and he showed us the hotline he talked about relationships, very general things, you know. And uh, I got out of the Kremlin and I called New York and I said, look, at this is what's happened. Here's what I've got. I said, but I can't guarantee you that we've got what we really need. And they said, well, you better come home. Salant, the president, has authorized you to fly first class. You couldn't, in those days, you had to get approval of the president to fly first class. <clears throat> And so I took a plane the next day and flew back to New York. And of course, I, once we were in the editing room, these people don't know what's been going on. They're all screaming at me, you know, why the hell could I do this? What's wrong? Why? I said, look, at, I did what I could under the circumstances I had. So we took the silent footage we had and we used my audio tape, which was good. And we kind of, it was kind of a lip sync. We played that and we salvaged it wasn't, a, it wasn't a terribly newsworthy news conference to begin with. News interview. Huh? News interview, right. Yeah. Right. And we went to, we went to Washington, and uh, I got a call that afternoon from a man who since has been come, become to known as the Prince of Darkness, Richard Pearl, who was then working for Henry Scoop Jackson, Senator. He said, we were listening to your broadcast from Moscow and the senator would like to talk to you. I said, well, I, said, I don't have much time here. We're going to be here two days before you go to the West Coast. I said, but tonight the, there's a downtime because the Soviets are having a state dinner for President Nixon. He said, so I could come during that hour or two later and we could meet for, at a hotel and have a meeting and talk. And we did. And right in the middle of this dinner, Jackson says, I hear there's a revolt brewing in the Soviet army. I said, oh? I said, how do you know that? He says, well, sources have told us. I said, well, what kind of sources? Well, Soviet Jews. I said, Senator, do you know how few Soviet Jews are in the Soviet army? I said, what the hell would they know about a revolt brewing in the Soviet army? Of course, it was a lot of baloney. <laughs>